Hey guys, Uncle Steph here. So I got a few articles about the state of PHP. Some are saying that PHP is going downtown. Other people are saying PHP as, is as strong as ever. So we're going to take a look at it from my perspective, doing this for 30 years. I will give you the truth because I'm not married to any particular technology. If PHP is going down, I will tell you. If it's going up, I will tell you. Whatever works, right? Whatever works. We can't become locked into any particular language. We've got to be a little bit more flexible. We've got to be swinging, swinging coders, if you know what I mean. Alrighty, so we're going to go one piece at a time, one piece at a time here. So let's start with this negative piece here. Uh, PHP usage has declined by 40% in just over two years. PHP's popularity has dropped dramatically, coinciding with WordPress becoming JavaScript first, according to its co-creator, Matt Mullenweg. So, uh, latest monthly update on the Tyobi index says that PHP is losing its mojo. For the first month of April, Tyobi's programming language index ranked PHP 17th, its lowest position ever. It's not just Tyobi, it shows PHP declining popularity. The annual Stack Overflow Developer Survey, PHP has fallen from 30% in 2018, i.e. the number of people who, are, who responded are using PHP, to just 18.5% in 2023. The JetBrains Developer Ecosystem Survey showed a similar draw from 30% in 2017 to 18% in 2023. This is particularly notable since JetBrains, along with WordPress, along with WordPress custodian company Automatic, are amongst the biggest sponsors of PHP, as I'll get into shortly. So which programming languages and markup languages have you used in the last 12 months? You see the chart here. So you can see 2017, where's PHP? PHP it was at 30%, now it's down to 18%. You see uh, JavaScript has fallen a little bit too, went from 65 to 61. Python from 32 to 54, it's rising. HTML, CSS has fallen a bit. SQL, eh, fallen a bit. Anyway, you get the idea. But if you look at PHP, it's still more popular than Go, Kotlin, Rust, Swift, Ruby, Scala, Objective-C. Well, who cares about these three, especially this one right here? It's still widely used. It's just, you know, if you look at C and C Sharp, they're, they're, they're in the same ballpark, right? Even C++, you could argue that too. So it's not a huge difference, but it's definitely a change from... Uh, 2017 when it was at 32 percent definitely a big change the drop off is perhaps most starkly illustrated in built with where the php popularity growth line started going down towards the end of 2020 so you see that here so the last time i wrote about php in november 2021 according to this author here the red line pulling the top 1 million websites was still above 30,000. now two and a quarter years later, it is close to the 15,000 mark. Although the actual figure built with quotes, as I write this, is 18.19. That 80% mark aligns with the stock overflow and jet brain survey. So we can confidently say that PHP has dropped from about 30% popularity among developers. Uh, that's a 40% de decrease in just two years. So what gives? What has changed so much in the last couple of years to make PHP an also ran web? programming language. So you got Matt Mullenweg, co-creator of WordPress CEO. He said recently at a conference, he said, I believe the majority of new code in WordPress is JavaScript now and has been for some time, he said, in response to an audience question. So in many ways, you could argue by what's the majority of activity happening, that Gutenberg has made a sort of a JavaScript first project. Yes, you read that correctly. Mr. Mullenweg or Weg said that WordPress is now a JavaScript first project. Gutenberg, or Gutenberg, excuse me, the company's controversial new block based user interface is the main reason for that. He admitted, though, that the shift from PHP to JavaScript was not easy. Anyway, I will link to this article. So you can definitely see, according to multiple statistics php is dropping so meanwhile the php foundation so the wordpress project the largest reason why php is still prevalent across the web is moving towards the javascript world that is almost certainly discouraging younger developers from adopting php and forcing other developers such as those devoted to wordpress customers to move away from php into javascript however 
There is still a relatively large group of developers using PHP. 18% of two large developer surveys isn't nothing, and that's where the PHP Foundation comes in. At a Laravel conference in February, Pros, I don't know who this guy is. I guess he's the founder of Laravel. He's the Laravel guy. Mostly focused on technical matters, but he did admit addressing PHP's public image is the hardest task for the PHP Foundation. I guess it's the guy who runs uh, the PHP Foundation. While he didn't specify what caused that public image to drop, he refers you back to Matt Mullenway's comments about why WordPress is now JavaScript first. In any case, Prosky, I cannot, cannot pronounce that, sorry guys, quickly pivoted to the active development going on in the PHP project, including by 10 paid developers. He concludes in this article, it is easy to see PHP 2024 as a forgotten child of the web development while JavaScript is the most popular kid in class. Sadly for PHP, its decline in usage is unlikely to stop anytime soon. Why would it? When WordPress developers are busy adapting to new JavaScript paradigm, to the new JavaScript paradigm but at least there's an active development in the PHP Foundation. So before you PHP nerds start having kittens, there's other articles and other things to comment on. Let me just jump into that. So let's look at uh, user statistics from uh, W3Techs. This diagram shows the user stats of PHP as a server-side programming language on the web. PHP is used by 75.9% of all websites whose server-side programming language we know. So you see the breakdown of PHP usage, you see uh, market position, you see PHP is still used by a huge amount of sites, much more than all of these technologies. Uh, so it's still widely used. So if it is fading, and it probably is to a certain extent, it's going to take a long time. It's going to take a very long time before it goes away. Very long time. But there's a big point, which I'm going to get into at near the end of this video, if you're wondering about what I think about this whole thing. And in full disclosure, I teach PHP, I have a course in that, but I also teach Python and I teach JavaScript. And I have said in so many videos, the language is secondary, tertiary in terms of development. Once you are, once you are a properly trained developer, the language becomes a second thought in many, many respects. Junior developers will think of themselves as a type of developer Pro developers will think of, them, think of themselves as a developer who uses different languages as a carpenter may use different tools, right? Depending on the job. So anyway, let me just jump back in. So this side here, PHP usage stats, what do you need to know in 2024? So, so far, and this is this these statistics compiled by this particular article here was driven from stats from many different sites. They cite them here, W3Text, JetBrains, blah, 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 blah. So it's probably a fairly accurate assessment since you got many different uh, sources for the information. So let's go here. Uh, let's zoom in a little bit so you can see it. 77% of all websites still use PHP. PHP powers 22% of the top 10,000 websites. Uh, PHP used by Facebook in 2004, that's PHP 4.0, is still used by 18,000 websites. So what does this mean? So Facebook in 2004 was built with PHP 4, which is very old face, very old PHP. We're at eight now to give you to give you context. And even today in 2024, still 18,000 websites still use old PHP 4. This goes to something I've been talking about for the longest time. There is plenty, plenty of legacy code uh, out there in the, uh, on the web. And that, I would argue, makes up a majority of the work, all this legacy code that has to be maintained and updated, which is good. Next line, 81% of all PHP uses are still for web development. What does that mean? If you're using PHP, 81% of the time it's for web development as I've been saying for a while. PHP developers can earn an average annual salary of 94000 and up, depends on your level of skill, really. 25.8% of web developers prefer PHP, okay? Uh, four countries have more than 1 million PHP-powered websites, okay? Only 6.2% of developers want to learn PHP. So you see there's a lot of PHP still flowing around out there, but very few people want to jump in. So what does that suggest? When you look at anything, when you look at any market, there's always a supply and a demand characteristic you have to consider. So what do I mean by that? 
There may be, for example, one million JavaScript jobs, but if there's two million JavaScript programmers, it's going to be hard to get a job. On the other hand, there may be only 500,000 PHP jobs. Forget that. There's only 100,000 PHP jobs, but there may be only 50,000 PHP developers. What does that do? Pushes up PHP salaries. There are over 700,000 searches per month on Google for the term PHP. So clearly, even though PHP has fallen, it's still very, very widely used. Remember in the previous article, here it is. In this previous article, they cite that PHP is now 2023, it's at 18%. So PHP is still in a range of popularity with C Sharp, C, Go, Kotlin, Rust is much more popular than Swift, much more popular than Ruby, more popular than Kotlin. Yes, it's not you know, way up in the 30s as it was before, but it's still widely used. And again, it still dominates the freelance space. So how many websites use PHP? Most websites use PHP. Out of the nearly 2 billion websites worldwide, over 33.7 million live ones use the programming language, including more than 1.6 million additional redirects. PHP is the most common programming language that suits general purposes. It's, pop it's a popular tool for web development since you can embed it in HTML. I'll link to all these articles so you can take a look at yourself. Over 77%, okay, I'm just going through. They go into more detail down here. Strong majority of websites still use PHP 7. Why? Because, well, see, only 12.6% use PHP 8. Why? Because PHP 8 is very cool, but it's really, an in well, it's got some shortcut methods and capabilities in there that help everybody but it's really an enterprise update. And these days, as, as I've been saying for years, whether it be PHP or JavaScript or Java or C Sharp, the upgrades to these languages are, they're not as significant as they used to be 10 years ago. Like, not even close. It's all little marginal improvements now. It's kind of like the difference between a laptop from 2020 versus a laptop in 2024, 2025 coming out. Not a huge difference. Over 2,000 high traffic and famous websites use PHP. A website's credibility is 75% influenced by its design, and PHP gives famous websites this edge. I don't know what they mean by that. The language is suitable for massive scaling. Its engine flexibility is a high performing and multi purpose web development platform, ideal for various forms of dynamic content. In a consequence, in consequence, I wonder if this article was written by AI. Over 2,000 high traffic sites rely on the language when expanding. Examples of these websites include WordPress, WhatsApp, Wikipedia, Pinterest, Zoom, and many others. Forbes magazine took notice of PHP's evergreen popularity and named it one of the top five programming languages in 2023. They also reported that PHP ex is expected to make a big comeback the same year, citing it's perfect for companies that want to scale. So yeah, there you go. Kind of a different picture, right? PHP programming language is used for many purposes. However, it remains most commonly used for web development. So here it is. For web development, 81% of PHP uses web development, as you would expect. Utilities, 27% data storage, framework, software development. If you're doing PHP, as I've been saying, it's typically just web development. You could do blockchain with PHP. You could do AI with PHP. I've seen AI machine learning in PHP. Oh, here it is right here. But I would never use it for that. Demographics, statistics. Oh, that's interesting. Top four countries that use PHP. United States, 1.7 million. 1.7 million, what? Well, I guess it's sites, yeah. Germany, 1.7, United Kingdom, 1 million, Russia, 1.3 million. So there you go. PHP developers earn an average annual revenue of 94,000. PHP developers in the U.S. earn an average revenue of around 94,000. However, it can be lower at about 60,000 for the beginners and higher at roughly 120 to 148,000 for intermediate senior developers. Developers are high in demand in 2023, so it's a little old. There are 4.4 million recorded software developers in the U.S. PHP developers in particular are highly sought after because most of the world's websites still use the programming language. And here's the other tidbit here. We have a high demand for PHP developers still because there's so much legacy PHP code out there. And you flip that out with the fact that only a very small percentage of developers want to learn PHP. What does that mean? That means there's a lot of job opportunities there. That's what it means. It's that simple. All right, that's my uh, review of PHP in 2024. So yes, it is falling, but a lot of that falling popularity is due to WordPress. Um, and WordPress is huge. 
but that's going to take a while to progress, right? That's going to take a while to progress. And, and as I said, if you are a WordPress developer, if you will, you still need to know your PHP. You don't have to be a master at it. You just got to know it because all the themes, the templates are created with PHP. We'll see what happens going further. If you think that you're going to draw PHP like this, you got another nerd coming because there's so much legacy stuff out there. There's so much investment in older WordPress with P well, current Word WordPress with PHP. It's going to take years and years for this to play out. Yeah, in five years, maybe PHP would drop down to 12% or 10% usage, which is still pretty highly used. But again, if you aspire to be an advanced developer, a pro developer, you're not going to worry so much about the language. You'll be able to pivot quite easily. So if you're new to development, understand, but once you learn the first programming language, to learn the second and the third and the fourth, very common for pro developers to learn new languages on the fly. And if you're going, oh my God, that's going to be horrible. No, it won't, because once you've learned the first programming language, all the rest are really easy to learn. For example, PHP has something called a variable, and it has arrays, it has methods and functions, it, has, uh, it uses design patterns, it has database access. These are all things that uh, C Sharp has, Java has, Python has, JavaScript has, TypeScript has. Yes, there are differences between the languages, but I would say PHP, all the modern languages, PHP, Python, Java, JavaScript, C Sharp, TypeScript, and so many others, they maybe share like 80, 90, 95% of the same concepts. The syntax, the code that you actually write looks a little bit different. And some of the behaviors that the languages have, um, you know, like, you know, there may be some, there'll be some slight differences between the way, for example, PHP expresses object oriented programming in some ways versus JavaScript versus Java versus Python. But it's not like a big deal. It's like learning to drive one car. Once you learn to drive one car, for you to go into another car, it's pretty much the same. You have to learn where you know the hazard button is, learn the, the quirks of the automobile, the subtleties. But it's not a huge issue, so don't be too concerned about it. So yeah, seems to me, based on these statistics, PHP's popularity is slowly drifting down. But that big hit the last four or five years uh, I think it's largely due to the WordPress thing. So it's not a big deal. I'm Uncle Steph. I mentor people in the ways of development and coding. I teach you to become a pro developer, how to turn that coding skill into high-valued work, whether you want to get a job, whether you want to freelance, whether you want to start a business, and so much more. Everything that I teach, by the way, is from personal experience personal experience. Yeah, so you know what I'm teaching is, is the real stuff. All right, we'll talk soon. Cheers.